Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be talking about food storage items that you may want to consider, especially if you're new to food storage as far as you know, putting up for a month, two months, a year, two years, whatever it is, or you don't currently have a garden or ways to provide some of these foods, or maybe you do, but there's certain things that you can't grow in your area or simply don't produce enough of. So I'm going to be talking about some of the things that I store up just to give you some ideas because I think it's really important that people get into this no matter where you are, no matter what your beliefs are. These are some things I think everybody should start stocking up on or something similar to it according to your dietary needs and uh, and your tastes, of course, and your family's tastes. You don't want to stock up on things that you or your family are not going to eat at all. And as you can see, my counter is pretty filled up with stuff just representing a fraction of the kind of things that I store up on. I kept bringing more and more things in there because I didn't want to forget to mention certain types of foods that I think people might not think of. But again, this is just only a part of what we store up. So let's start with dairy. So if you don't have cows or goats or sheep that produce milk for you, then you're going to want to consider stocking up on dairy products. So what I'm doing here is going far beyond just the basic rice and beans. We're talking about all the other things that are either going to help prevent food fatigue or add nutritionally to your diet because when you're in a grid down situation you don't want to just survive you want to be able to thrive so that's what we're talking about here so as far as dairy goes some things that you can you can store up um i forgot to mention in my last video i forgot a lot of things but one of the things i forgot to bring up was stocking up and freezing butter it freezes excellent i have been freezing butter for years i'll buy it in bulk whenever we go to Costco and just get a whole bunch of it and then put it up in the freezer and then pull out a box at a time as I need it. Now if you're concerned about not having freezer space, unlike us you don't have a backup gas generator or solar power, then you can can butter too and I know a few different channels out there like Wanda over at Deep South Homestead has one and there's a few others I don't remember who all they are but yes that's another way that you can store butter for a long term period of time okay now as far as storing fresh milk uh, if you if you do have goats and cows and you're wanting to store up your excess milk now because instead of turning it into cheese or some other things or giving it away or selling it you may want to consider storing it it does freeze really well if you follow the safety procedures and storing in glass jars I've done this many many times we had a friend that was giving us for almost two years I think it was was giving us on a weekly basis about a gallon to two gallons of goat milk and I would take any of the excess that we had and I would just store it in the quart jars in the freezer and I do have a video on how to do this I will link to in the description box down below because there are a few things that you want to follow making sure that it's the the jar itself is protected and uh, so on and so forth but if if you're now like us I don't we don't have access to that anymore uh, so I stock up on fresh milk the organic milk from Costco so I will buy several boxes each box has three half gallons in it and then we just freeze it this is frozen solid right now so we have to stick it back in the freezer to keep it that way and it will keep pretty much indefinitely in your freezer now in the case of if something happened and we were and our freezers went out we didn't have our solar power or gas generator then I would do what I could to ferment all the milk so that I wouldn't have to worry about it going bad whether it be in the form of making yogurt cheese or kefir now some even longer term uh, milk storage ideas would be uh, the canned powdered whole goat milk you can get this on Amazon at least I think you still can we bought a bunch I, I can't remember I think it was a we bought a few boxes of a dozen cans and so this is one really good option so you're getting all that goodness of the goat milk and making sure that whatever milk you stock up on get whole milk don't go with two percent or skim you you're going to need all that fat and all that fat of a good organic milk is healthy for you anyway now I don't think this particular one is necessarily organic but it is goat milk and the Gosner milk is definitely not organic, but at least it's whole. 
when you're buying it like this though it is going to be ultra pasteurized it has to be when storing in a box like this uh, i've heard people can find it at a dollar stores for well a dollar a piece we get ours at our local local store i've never seen the gosner milk at any dollar store anywhere around us even when we go into town i've looked so i buy ours at the our local grocery store it's said to last up, up to a year i believe i know it will last easily up to two years but what i do is i cycle through i always like to keep some in storage but i also cycle through it so i'll use this a lot for making white gravies and things like that so we can conserve our more fresh milk for eating on cereals or you know whatever anything where you want your milk to have more of that fresh taste to it now i personally don't mind the taste of the box milk it tastes more like canned milk does it's that same because of the high heat process in doing that now yes of course you're going to be looking at losing some of your nutrients in that but at least it's still some form of milk that's going to prevent food fatigue and then another one i like to store up on now this is a bovine milk so or cow's milk and this one is whole milk it's organic non-gmo hormone free and all that this is the best price i've seen on a powdered milk and i get it through subscribe and save and i can save even more so i will link to this down below i just keep it stored in this nice foil pouch because it's going to last for a very long time as is once i open it up though i then put it in a canning jar and keep it handy and use it that way now let's move on to the sweeteners that i like to stock up on one of those is going to be the organic cane sugar so evaporated cane sugar yeah the other is going to be coconut sugar this one i get on subscribe and save on amazon so i'll link to it down below one thing that's great about coconut sugar or any of your sugars honeys maple syrups they're going to have a very long shelf life you don't have to worry about them going bad with the the granulated sugars of course you want to make sure you keep them in a dry place but the coconut sugar in particular is very high in minerals so being that it's a sweetener and it's mineral rich that's going to give it that added bonus over just your regular cane sugar and then of course maple syrup i've been getting mine from costco for the best price or the organic maple syrup i do wish they stored it in glass instead of the plastic but it's still some form of sweetener it's going to also have calories these the all these kind of things is important you know if you're looking at a grid down situation some major thing that's going on it's important to have things that are high calorie on hand and so that's why all these sugars even if you're a sugar-free kind of person you're going to probably want to change that in a serious situation because those calories are going to be very important and then of course uh raw honey of any variety my favorite is the glory bee uh raw pacific northwest blackberry honey i get this one on costco online and i'm not sure if all all around the united states if people can do that but uh i do know it's also available on amazon it's a little more on amazon but i will link to that below i buy the box a box of it at a time i used to buy it in the buckets but it's harder to find it that way now and also these little jars are are great jars with the lids and i reuse these all the time for various you know you can can in these if you want to and because this is a regular mouth canning jar size right here and so that lid too will also uh, go with any of your regular mouth canning jars and then another one i've been starting to stock up on but not necessarily for a grid down situation but let's say you are diabetic and you absolutely can't have sugar then um this is one i'm i've been experimenting more and more with it and so far i'm pretty happy with it i've looked at monk fruit sugar for sweetener for a long time but it took me a while i i'm not going to buy the one with that artificial ingredient the erythritol or whatever that is <laughs> even though it's touted as being generally known as safe i personally try to avoid that and so this one is 100 percent pure monk fruit extract now it is obviously going to be a more expensive than the cheaper one with the blend and it's also going to be more expensive per pound or per ounce than your regular sugar however because you need such a teensy weensy little bit of it i did the math on this and found that this ends up being the same cost per pound as the uh as the organic cane sugar 
so I'm not spending any more money on it. So that I recommend. Now let's talk a little bit about, I want to mention beans just because of the fact that if you're thinking of putting in a garden this year, most people can grow beans really well. And these are my own homegrown beans. These are both the same bean. When I pick them young, then I use them as a green bean and can them up. And then, I, the, and then the rest I let mature and I use as a dry bean. And these work great in chilies or beans and cornbread or anything like that, soups and so on. And I love these. And these are the runner beans. I talk about these a lot. I think I have a video just on these that I'll go ahead and link to down below. And uh, some other things I do if we're going to go back to talking about garden, a lot of people, I know if you're really dry climate, you probably can't, but a lot of people can grow zucchini pretty easily. At least around here, zucchini grows like crazy. We always end up with way more zucchini than we need off of just a couple of plants. So I cut it up and dehydrate it and put it in jars like this. I vacuum seal it, but this is a jar I'm working through. And then I can add this to soups and just about anything. I can powder it up and it adds more nutrition to whatever it is I'm, I'm making. Now, if you're wanting to get into buying freeze-dried foods, that is going to be the more expensive way to go. If you're having to buy it, you don't have a freeze dryer. But I like to, even though we grow potatoes quite well here, I still will buy the Mother Earth Products potatoes and vacuum seal them. Like I bought a huge bag of them and vacuum sealed it up. Why? Because potatoes are one of those high carb things uh, that are really good to have on hand that have so many uses and go well in anything and can help prevent food fatigue. So when I'm talking the dehydrated ones, these are the ones I'm going to usually throw into soups and stews and that kind of stuff where I reserve my own homegrown potatoes, which at this time we still have a bunch left. We're still working through them for doing something where I want a more fresh potato or I want to mash, you know, fried potatoes or anything like that. That's why I still do that even though we grow that well. Then other things you may want to consider if you're getting into buying some uh, pre-dehydrated and freeze-dried foods are things that you don't grow. Like for us, that one of those things would be pineapple and mango. And so I, I buy a lot of this from Mother Earth products. And carrots, that's another one because we still haven't found a really good carrot that, that just real produces really well for us here. We're still working on it, but Carrots are easy. You can go to Costco and buy a massive bag of organic carrots, cut them up and can them. I, I plan on doing that real soon, but I also like to buy the dehydrated carrots from Mother Earth Products. Oh, and if you're interested in that, in the freeze-dried and dehydrated Mother Earth Products, I do have a link down below that if you go through that link, you can save 10% on your order. But I know that's not going to be the best choice for everyone either. So but if you're looking at something like you're you're wanting to hurry and get some food stocked up now, it's a really great thing to look at because and I like and, and I'll I'll put the video down below why I like Mother Earth products over other brands. And so you can understand and you'll you can just look into if you like buying in number 10 cans You're going to want to go with another brand me I like buying in bags and packaging myself It saves money because you're not having to pay them to package it for you and then I can package it in smaller amounts I just prefer it. So that's just one thing But you can check out that video I'll link down below for more information on that now another thing I'm starting to stock up on and I'm going to be uh, putting some in some jars today are the organic sun-dried figs. Now we do have a couple of fig plants. I have no idea how long it's going to take though uh, before they actually start producing fruits and I'm kind of addicted to these and I, I love them. They just make such a great candy replacement and so I've been getting these from Costco and stocking up on them and I'm going to start vacuum sealing them into jars. Anything like that that you just think is going to be both healthy but also a great way to break things up. A nice healthy snack. Stock up on it and put it away. So if you're new to my channel and if you haven't and you haven't seen how I vacuum seal into jars, I'm going to be doing that today. So consider things that you really like and your family really likes and start putting that up. Uh, with that in mind, another thing that I stuck up on a lot of is organic cacao and organic cacao butter. And that way I can make my own healthy homemade chocolates whenever I want. And sometimes I'll incorporate the freeze-dried fruits that I buy from Mother Earth products and uh, 
without adding sugar and sometimes I'll add my own homemade powdered sugar. I have all kinds of homemade chocolate videos that you can make. What I'll do is put a link to the whole playlist in the description box down below so you can check out my peppermint patty, my peanut butter cups, and all the other, the orange cream chocolate, all the other ones that I have down there. I have lots and I have several different ways that you can make it. I've been stocking up on this kind of stuff for a long time but I've really been getting more into it again lately is stocking up on a lot of nuts. So as you can see here I have sliced almonds, I have hazelnuts, obviously the jar I'm working on. I bought a big huge bag of it. I can't remember how like 20 pound, 10 pound, whatever it was. And then I uh, put them in, vacuum sealed them into a bunch of jars. This is a jar I'm currently working on with the hazelnuts. These are organic. Pecans, whole almonds. These are the organic ones I've been getting from Costco. And coconut. I'm gonna, I wanna talk about why, why these are good things to stock up on. So if you're somebody who can't, either you're vegan or you just can't have dairy for any reason, stocking up on a variety of nuts is going to be very important because there's so much you can do with this. I have been making a lot of nut milk lately using the various different blends of nuts and uh, I have so many videos on how to make your own nut milk. I will link to one of my most recent ones below. That includes, I also have one just on how to make coconut milk. And so you can make any kind of milk using any of these. The process is the same no matter which one or which blend you use. Now, what I do with the pulp is going to change depending on what blend I'm using. One of the things I do is I make my own homemade nut flour out of the pulp and I've been experimenting with that. I even just recently made, you might have seen it in my community post, some pancakes using only the nut flour. So those who can't have grains or can't have gluten, that's an option right there. And it worked and they were so tasty. I loved them. I liked them better than the regular wheat wheat flour pancake. And then the other thing I do with the pulp is I make my own vegan cheese. So, so many things you can do with those nuts. And so as you can, I recommend stocking up. Some of these things I get from Costco. Some of them, oh, I also stock up on Brazil nuts too. Uh, I try not to stock up on those too much. They don't seem to have as long as a, of a shelf life as all the rest. But everything else, I have never had an issue with them going rancid in the vacuum sealed jars. But if you're concerned about it, like with the Brazil Brazil nuts, for instance, you may want to just freeze them if you have the ability to do that. So nuts and coconut. In fact, I just ordered a whole bunch more coconut because it is such a great thing to have on hand. So many things you can do with coconut that will help prevent food fatigue that doesn't just involve making a, a dairy-free milk. Another thing you might, might want to consider, even though we do a lot of homemade breakfasts around here, we do, you know, leftover rice will be used as a cold cereal the next day with a little bit of milk and cinnamon sugar. Uh, I make gr my own homemade granola, so stocking up on oats is important, but that should be one of your staples that you're considering anyway. And of course, eggs and some kind of homemade uh, sausage or beef bacon or whatever, and uh, and fried potatoes. Those are some other things I make for breakfast, pancakes, and so on and so forth. But for those days when things are just tough, you don't have time to make breakfast, or you just want to mix it up, find your favorite cereals. We uh, only buy organic cereals, and so Cascadian Farms is one of my favorites, as well as Nature's Path. And so I get them, uh, even though I'm not a... I'm not big on Walmart. I have found I can find the cheapest price on these, ordering them online on Walmart at Walmart for these brands, and then just have them delivered. Especially most of them, if you buy them in packs of two, they're still going to be a lot more expensive than your, your, you know, the other cereals that you can find in the store. But again, something that will help prevent food fatigue. And what you can do if you're concerned about keeping it stored in the boxes, you can do the same idea. I've uh, vacuum sealed them in the half gallon jars before, done that many times, and they will last for a very, very long time. I, I can't give you exact years because I usually try to cycle through all my stuff, but all my stuff that I've, uh, I've had stuff sit for years before I got to, as long as I didn't lose my seal, it was still just as fresh as the day it went into the jar. So that is an option there. So again, I'll be showing this method here in a minute if you're new to that. And then of course you don't want to forget your herbs and spices. So we're talking both medicinal herbs, elderberries, I grow my own lavender. A couple other medicinal ones I have here are marshmallow, but this is also a good, the greens are also a great vegetable. And catnip, 
So I have tons more. I'm just bringing in a few just to give you ideas. These are the things we grow ourselves. But if you need to purchase your herbs and spices, then I recommend uh, my two favorite brands that I get uh, from Amazon, um, and most of them are available through Subscribe and Save, so you can save even more, are the Frontier brand and the Star West brand, as you can see here. And as long as I haven't opened them, I keep them in their bags. And because they're in mylar bag and they're sealed well, they're going to last for a very long time in the bags. And so I don't worry about it, and this makes them easy to store. I have a special storage system just for that. So right here I have some organic ground cloves, organic Ceylon cinnamon, organic turmeric. I just grabbed a few bags just to show you. Always buy in bulk because that's going to be your best price. And then once I've opened it, then I'll, I'll usually store it in a uh, jar like this. Now this was actually, this paprika was actually from a five pound bag that I had purchased, I believe from Glory Bee. And so I have several jars of these, same thing with the ginger. Now, we think a lot about grains, you know, oats and all that kind of stuff, but don't forget to stock up on noodles. Because noodles, even if left in their package like this, I've had some in packages like this for years that were still good. I swear they never go bad. However, if you live in a place that has high humidity and you're concerned about it, then you may still want to consider vacuum sealing your noodles into some mason jars. So that's what I'm going to do today to show you how this works with these, these ones right here. All of these noodles I just showed you, the organic ones I get from Costco. I actually buy a lot of them online. I just order online because we don't get into town that often to shop at Costco. So I've been pretty much every week doing an order from uh, Costco of all the things that I'm trying to stock up on a lot of the stuff like the the syrup the nuts the pasta uh, The oils these are the kind of things that I can get I can stock up on from Costco and have it delivered here and just keep putting it up now before I get on to the noodles I almost forgot to mention oils don't forget to stock up on your favorite oils. avocado oil this is a new one i've been getting from costco i do really like chosen foods this one's just a little bit less money and i can also get this from costco online and then this coconut oil if you're wanting a refined one that has no flavor to it this is the most heat stable as far as the coconut oil getting the refined and you can get this one from subscribe and save on Amazon so I will link to it below so I have many many buckets of just this alone I use this for soap making as well as anything where I'm gonna fry fry like potatoes or the almond chicken or the orange chicken some of these videos I have recipes on out there but avocado oil is also a great choice because it is also very heat stable and uh anything that's going to be very heat stable is also going to last a long time in your food storage longer than like your olive oils and stuff which i love olive oil and i do still recommend doing that just make sure that when you purchase olive oil you store it in a very cool place that's going to make it last a lot longer all right let's go ahead and open up this bag of noodles here and we'll get them vacuum sealed into my jar it looks like I could fill two jars with just one of these bags. Or you can use uh, a half gallon jar like this size right here. There we go. So one 16 ounce, is this 16 ounce? It should be. This is actually 17.6. I love Costco. Usually things like that are going to be 16 ounces, but at Costco it's always a little bit bigger. Plus you get a big pack for a really good price and they're organic and non-GMO. So then all you do is you put your, it can be a used canning lid, a previously used canning lid, which actually I find work better for vacuum sealing than brand new ones. But you can use the brand new ones too. And then you want to make sure you have your food saver tops like this. And I will have links to all this stuff below. You can use your regular food saver, electric food saver, but my way of doing it, because I've pretty much quit, I've given up on food saver, and I just like this method better, is I use a brake bleeder. Again, linked, it'll be linked below. Just insert the tip and hold it in place. It doesn't snap in place like the food saver tip does, but uh, it's not hard to hold it in place. And then you just pump this up until it gets to at least 15 PSI. I usually go up to 17 or 18. So I'll do that right now. 
Also make sure that when, you know, and I didn't, I, I forgot to do this. Check your lids and make sure that they're not bent up and that there's nothing on the rims or no cracks on the rim of your jar. Otherwise, you're not going to get a good seal. But if it doesn't seal, then you just check and go, okay, well, I need to get something different. Okay. Take the thing off and now the jar is sealed and that's going to last for many years in the jar like that. I'm talking many years. And then if it's like this, I don't like to scrub my uh, my permanent marker off because it puts uh, micro scratches in the lid and makes it harder for it to clean off later. So if you constantly are reusing your lids like I am, I prefer to use just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol that I keep in a bottle. You just need a tiny little spray, rub it in with your finger, and then wipe it off with a dry cloth. And there, now I'm ready to label that by date and what's in there, though it's kind of obvious what's in there, but I then I will still follow it up just to be certain, just in case I lo it loses its seal. Having the lid on it for any of your dried goods is usually going to be sufficient anyway for most of your very dry goods, especially things like noodles, because they're as dry as dry can be. I've had many things like herbs that I've had vacuum sealed in jars where maybe it lost its seal, and they were still great. They were still good in the same jar sitting there for a year, two years, and no problems. Another thing I didn't think to show you that you might not have thought about is storing up on salt. I recommend two varieties in particular. That's your Himalayan pink salt and your Redmond real salt. I like them both for different reasons, and I stock up on both. The Redmond real salt I like to buy in the big 10 pound bucket and then the Himalayan salt I buy in a 20 pound bag. Well sometimes they'll send it to me in four five pound bags but I'm still getting the 20 pound uh, price difference you know the better price by buying it in bulk. So I'll link to both of those down below if you'd like to check in on those. Salt is going to be very important not just for flavoring but also for the sake of preserving foods whether it be in the form of fermenting or even salt drying some of your foods. Now, I personally have never done that, but I may want to do that someday with some meat, and so that's another way that you can preserve your, your goods. So I didn't even talk about meats here. So that's another one too. I have a video just on meats and uh, how to use canned meats. I have a whole bunch of meat canned up. I have meat in the freezer of various kinds that if for some reason we lost you know, we didn't have any backup power and we lost public power or our freezers died, I can pull all that meat out and just start canning it up and putting it up because I have lots and lots of jars uh, that I can that I can use for that too. Or we'll dehydrate. I almost always have something dehydrating next to my wood stove during the winter time and then in the months where we're getting lots of solar power then that's when I'm usually using my electric dehydrators but as long as I have a fire going I'm going to use that instead so I'm not putting wear and tear on my electric uh, dehydrators. But I have lots of videos on dehydrating herbs and all kinds of stuff like that. You can check any of these out. Just do a search on my channel or just do a search on YouTube and make sure you put rain country after whatever your search criteria is to see if I have any videos on that. But I'll link to as much as I can down below and uh, whatever, I, whatever I can think of that might help you get on this track to food storage or just to give you some more ideas. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it really gets you seriously thinking about the importance of having food storage. Now, because this video is already really long, I want to bring up one more video because I'm not going to talk about it here. And that is, I we did a video on the five ways that food storage saves. This is going to help you think about why having food storage is really important and not just for major catastrophes. Though with everything going on, I recommend it. But don't forget, you can have your own personal grid down situation where having some food storage on hand is going to save you so much in so many ways. So check out that video on five ways that food storage saves. I'll link to it down below. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that maybe you learned something new from it and it encourages you to get started or continue doing what you're already doing or add to what you've already got. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.